Hi, my name is Paul Russell, producer, composer and instructor here at Point Blank. In this video, we're going to be looking at arranging and sketching ideas using the new machine MK3 controller. For more details on our courses, visit pointblankmusicschool.com. Often I find the creative process can be stifled by technicalities. So, you know, we start making a piece of music and then all of a sudden we're stuck in some technical exercise like trying to sort the mix out or trying to find, how, find out about how a plugin works or trying to find the right sound, for example. And what I try to do to combat this is I try to set very specific restrictions on what I'm doing um, to, to kind of focus the workflow a little bit better. So for example, something I might do would be to try and create an entire track out of a single sample. Or with the example that I'm about to show you, uh, basically using a single instrument to create uh, an entire track. With the MK3, Native Instruments have solved quite a lot of the workflow issues that I had with the original MK2. For example, the screens obviously make it much easier to navigate uh, the browser and sampling and looking at all the different parameters for the plugins. A lot of the functionality that was before hidden behind sort of shift menus and that kind of thing now all has its own buttons. So for example, fixed velocity, pad mode, keyboard mode, chord mode, and the step sequencer now all easily accessible by just one touch. With the example I'm going to create today, I've sampled a Suzuki Omnichord, an instrument from 1981, I believe, uh, basically an electronic harp. And all I've sampled here is one of the bass sounds. So it's just a G minor chord, and then just a single note from the actual harp itself. So let's go ahead and put some ideas down. I'm going to start with just checking what the tempo is. Seems about right. And let's just quickly record. So you can hear my timing wasn't fantastic on that. So I can just use shift quantize to kind of shift it around. And also, I kind of missed out on the last note. And this is a good opportunity to look at how easy it is to edit events using the new controller. I can just use the push encoder to move over to the last note here. I can then move the playhead using shift and the encoder itself. And basically what I want to do is I want to duplicate this note and then move it over to the very end so it can just kind of finish off the, the whole sequence that I was trying to create. So let's copy that note and paste it. And then I can just either use nudge to kind of move it where I want, or I can just use the, posi the position editor. And it'll basically lock to whatever the current grid settings are. Or you can hold shift and basically move it at smaller increments. All of this would have been much easier to do on the software previously, but now it's, it's so easy with the screens and all the functionality that they built into the MK3. Uh, let's add some effects to the sound just to make it a little bit more interesting, more like a bass sound, which is what I'm trying to get from this. I can use the push encoder to quickly navigate to the internal effects. If, if I change the vendor control here, I can basically flip through all the different vendors as well. So let's add a reso chord. And we'll put this into string mode. just adding a little bit of it, just to add a little bit of bass underneath that sound. What I'm also going to add is a bit of a beat delay as well, so we can get a little bit more movement out of it. Set the crossover, let's bring the mix all the way down. So there you can see it's just got a little bit more movement to it, and it's so quick and easy now to move between different plugins and then use the page settings to basically go through all the different parameters for that sound. So let's go ahead and have a look at the second sound. For this, I'm going to use the chord mode. I'm going to set this to chord sets, and then let's use the second minor set. And again, let's just record a really basic idea down. 
So timbers back on, you can use the count in. And there we have a very sort of basic uh, pattern set up. And I can duplicate that pattern. And let's add one more sound to this before we start bringing in drums and everything else. So I'm going to go back to pad mode. I'm going to duplicate this sound. So now we've got it there as well. Quickly go to the plugin settings, add some grain delay. Uh, this is probably one of my favorites plugins is the grain delay because it's really easy to add kind of like a shimmer and a shine to sound. So if, again, if we listen to those chords, we can just bring this up in octave, add a little bit of space, a little bit of density. You can see just how much more sonically interesting it makes that particular sound. Let's go back over to our duplicates. And what I want to do with this is basically create a lead sound. So first thing I'm going to do is set the voice mode to legato. Use a little bit of glide. Open up keyboard mode. And let's set this to minor scale. You can see now, because it's set to legato and um, it's set to glide, it's got a little bit more sort of movement to it. Now, the problem is it's still a one shot, so it's basically going to run out of time. So what I can do here is let's just truncate that sample, go over to the zone area, and I'm going to set up a loop. So all I'm trying to do here is basically make it long enough to loop so that I can basically use it as a sustained note. Use the X fade to kind of smooth out the loop a little bit. Great. So that's a little bit closer to the sound I was looking for. I'm going to move into some of the sampler settings a little bit and add a little bit of compression to it, a bit of drive, and a little bit of filtering as well. I'm also going to set fixed velocity at this point. So I just keep the uh, volume consistent over time. And let's set that fixed ve velocity amount to 127. This is a good opportunity to show you um, one of the new features of the MK3, which is the touch strip. So this is one of the touch strips uh, taken from Machine Jam. And it has some of the same functionality. So for example, you can use notes mode. So instead of having to play this on the pads, I can now use the touch pad to play that section. So let's just play back the track. a little bit of practice to kind of get your finger in exactly the right place. One of the beauties of this is that it's going to be locked to whatever the scale type is set to. So if I was using a scale that basically had less notes in it, like a pentatonic, uh, minor pentatonic or something like that, there would be sort of less notes in between. But what I really like about it is it actually allows you to play the sound in a completely different way, um, totally different to if you were just sort of tapping pads. And I like some of the the, the sort of the rawness of it and the fact that you can sort of make mistakes with it. So let's record a little sound with this. Um, I'm just going to duplicate that pattern before we record the new parts. Okay, now we've kind of got our sort of different sections. Let's add a beat to this. Going to the browser, we'll look in groups. And again, I can just use the push controller to very quickly go through the different available groups. So let's load up M-Base Kit. That's obviously one thing to notice is that when node mode is on, it basically um, disables the pads themselves. So that's caught me out a few times. Let's just make sure that that's off. OK, so this is obviously going to come with a bunch of built-in patterns, as most of the groups do. Let's just get rid of those. And let's just lay down our own beat. So we have that. I'm going to just 
load up one of the earlier patterns on this as well. So let's take that pattern, let's duplicate it, and now we can add something else to it as well. So I can use a note repeat in this situation to basically put a bit of a hi-hat pattern down. I'm going to take the fixed velocity off for this because the great thing about note repeat is that you can kind of dig into the sound um, using the different velocities to get sort of different textures and tones. So let's record this quickly. get all that really nice movement in there as well. So at the moment we've got a few patterns. We've got two on our drums and we've got three um, that are happening in our uh, sort of melodic section. So what I can do now is basically start putting a bit of an arrangement together. And again, before arranging was something that was much, much easier to do in the software environment. But with the new arranger here, it's much easier to create different sections, um, add different loops to it and then basically build up your song from there. So for example, I could just create a new section, start off with one of the patterns, just playing on its own, create another section, and let's put that same pattern in there. And then on the second section, for example, we can bring in the first drum pattern. Go ahead and create one more section where I can now use the second drum pattern and the final pattern from the um, melodies as well. So this has got the lead and the hi-hat. So in that way, it's very quick and easy just to string together a very simple arrangement. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.